Haribo, Haribo, Haribo. So, um, I didn't get a message that the thing is on. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Oh, you know what? I think I got a call. Okay, just came in. So, I want to give our guest a chance to speak a little something. We're very fortunate that we have visitors, and uh, it's always nice if when the roadies come that we're able to get a chance to hear something. Is that on the microphone? Mm -hmm. um, the, the older ones? Oh, no, there were two of these. Yeah, two of those ones. So you can give to beginning with the other oh. people. Just speak something. Meanwhile, I better call into the conference. Appreciate it. Thank you. Do first. And there's no microphones? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a go first? But well, Russell, you're not unless you want to say something. No. You're not living. Sure. We're going to the guest. Yeah. Right. When I speak, then the most important person who I want to know comes in wow. after I'm finished. Sarah Bhagavad Krishna Goswami. And so I had the good fortune of meeting Narayan Maharaj once. And it's my first time in Narayan Maharaj Temple. Oh. I met him 20 years ago, and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> I'm a Dallas devotee, you know, I just found the road. And um, um, I was serving a, a spiritual master in Vrindavan in 1989. When he was, uh, I was serving to Mark Krishna Goswami in Vrindavan in 1989, when he was very fired up meeting us in Aramaras every night, preparing for his Brahma Samhita course. And I could see how enlightened he was with that association. And uh, I also got to be close to him, and I was very disappointed, actually, that things went the way they went, and he wasn't able to maintain or complete that relationship with Narayan Maharaj. So I just did something to be told in person. Um, I guess I should mention a, 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 a And um, in any case, um, he invited me to use him when the Ramas was there. And it was quite powerful. It was very nice. I wasn't in a very good place, but it was very nice to get that association. He really lifted me up. And so, uh, I want to very thanks to Shri Prabhupada. Yeah. Our Prabhupada. I'd like to read his books. Yeah. I'm glad to be here. Actually, I had a very nice experience with Pujapati uh, Krishna Maharaj. Couple, but one stands out. I was, uh, oh, I was uh, preaching in Africa for many years, and uh, when I came back, oh, I know why. That makes sense. I cut this thing. Okay, how about yeah. When we came back, we were staying in Washington, D.C. because I'd worked with Srila Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj for many, many years, maybe 20 years from the time he took sannyas through all the preaching in Africa and everything. And um, we, were, we had a preaching center in Washington, D.C. And at the time that there was some uh, difficulties going on, so to speak, Pujapad uh, Tamal Krishna Maharaj and Shripad uh, uh, Giriraj Maharaj, they came through. And at that time, also I was associating with Gurudev. So, uh, Gurudev Maharaj and Tamal Krishna presented me with a book they had written, compiled, <laughs> of all the quotes of Srila Prabhupada about association and everything. So I was like very happy to receive it because I was pretty much, with the exception of a couple of God Brother friends, pretty much alone there, you know, because all once everything happened was a little difficult. So that really kind of saved me because I had so much regard for him and Giriraj Maharaj because they were such stout devotees of Prabhupada. So when they gave me that, I felt really encouraged, <laughs> you know, because it was a really difficult time, you know, at the time. Because I I'd worked with Shri Bhakti Maharaj for more than 20-something years and still, you know, still staying right next door and still serving and helping him and everything, you know. So that was really important for me. Mahaprabhu? Okay, but we have to say something about Krishna consciousness. Whatever you know about Krishna consciousness, stand up and say. Well, I'd just like to say how I 
got into Krishna consciousness, it was uh, through the mercy of my my brother, Yatai Chaitanya Das, who left his body in 2015. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I was taking care of my, our other brother for the past few years, so I haven't been around as much, but I'm starting to come around more now. Oh, really nice. Yeah, I remember Prabhuji. Yes. Yeah, but he did so much service. In fact, he gave me a whole truckload of books oh, yeah. to hold on to. Yeah, he was a yeah, he was very, very, very serious. fired up. Very f he served out to his last, you know, yes. very important. So now you're reaping benefit of that. Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Prabhuji, say something to me. Yeah. Hi, Bo. I'm an avid in travels. I come to the temple to see the Mata Charan's man. Ten years, and I just yeah, I really came to her mission and distributed her art and her books, and mm -hmm. working with the Sakti and all the team, and yeah, I'm just really excited for uh, Guatemala to come here to the Tamil too to be able here and serve with the last day to try to keep Haribo. Yeah, Haribo, very good. These are all. Yeah, this is Brindavan for all of us, <laughs> and this is uh, Govinda Kund. So. Many people reside here in Govinda Kund. I live near Radhakund Shamkund, which is not far from here. Our own Louis Bazaar is right there on 441, <laughs> and so forth like that. So everybody, that's how we consider a Lachua. Raman Reti, uh, is Contempo Raman Reti is there, so everything here is Braj. Unless you go to Gainesville, it's Matura. It's <laughs> Matura. <laughs> so um, yesterday was the beginning of Bhishma Panchak, and um, we uh, had a Sunday program to the celebrate. The recording has started. Don't mind, there's also a phone conference that goes on across the country, so we kind of keep the phone for that. But um, we, so we started discussing yesterday three things. One thing was the um, Avir Bhav of Srila Bhakti Taitav Madhavushami Maharaj, who is a very stalwart disciple of Srila Bhakti Sarana Sarasati Thakur. And we also discussed the Tirobhav, means the disappearance day, of Srila Gaur Pushodas Babaji, who, as everyone knows, was the spiritual master of Jagat Guru Srila Bhaktisana Sarasati Thakur. So, besides that, it was also the beginning of Bhishma Panchakam. So, we began to discuss that in the significance. These last five days of Karti uh, Mas are called Bhishma Panchak. So, this very special thing <clears throat> I was explaining yesterday is because it is very much related to Bhishma Dev. And I was making the correlation between Braj Bhakti and Bhishma Dev because this is something that's not very well known. Uh, normally we think of Bhishma Dev in context of the Mahabharata and we think of the great warrior Bhishma Dev and we also think of Bhishma Dev as actually fighting on the opposite side from Krishna. So there are many considerations about Bhishma Dev, but also according to Sastra, Swayambhu Nara Shambhu Kumara Kapilo Manu Palado Janako Bhishma. So Bhishma is also one of 12 Mahajans. So we also have regard that in the realm of Dharma, Bhishma is considered Mahajan. Mahajan means, Maha literally means great, Jan means person. Among the great persons who are authorities, Bhishma is counted among them. Huh? And then, uh, what is it? Bali Vyasi Kivayam. So Yamaraj is speaking. He's saying, these 11 persons and myself, Bali Maharaj, Shukdev Goswami, uh, and the other ones I mentioned, Brahma, uh, Narda, and Shiva, right? And then the four Kumaras, right? Kapila Dev and Manu. And then those three kings especially, Prahlad was a king actually because eventually he took over the kingdom of his father. Uh, Janak Maharaj, the father of Sita Devi, and Bhishma, right? All great warriors, but great authorities on spiritual life. So what was the connection, especially between Bhishma Dev and Braj Bhakti? So we have to look very, very deeply. Al Srila Prabhupada wanted that when we would study Sastra, we would come equipped with the book, sufficient lighting to see the book, if you needed to wear any spectacle, you put on your spectacles, and then you take the shovel from your pocket and put it on the table next to you. 
So the shovel is for digging, digging very deeply. Because Bhakti Sastra is a very, very deep thing. Srila Jiva Goswami Pad has written more than 400,000 verses. If Shivyasa Dev has already written 18,000 verses, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Mool Grunt of our Sampradaya, right? Srimad Bhagavatam uh, is the Mool Grunt of our Sampradaya. We consider it's the natural commentary on all the Vedanta. So this is the, like the Mool Sastra, Mool means root Sastra of our entire Sampradaya. What need to write anything else? Why so many commentaries? I have one book at home. It's called The Symphony of Commentaries. Mm -hmm. Commentary of Srila Siddhar Swami, Adi Siddhar Swami, right? Bhavartha Deepika. Then all the commentaries of the major acharyas. Then Vishnu Chagavati Thakur, Sartha Darsini Tika. Then Ajiva Goswami, Lagu Toshini teacher. Sanatha Goswami, Bira Toshini So uh, Sanjan Toshini Tika. So, so many commentaries, so many verses, and Jiva Goswami synthesized, wrote 400,000 more verses, including compiling Satsandarvas, means six Sandarvas, right? So, if Srimad Bhagavatam is enough, why so much information? Because the Sastra is unlimited. Tulya Bhagavata Krishna Vibhu Savasraya. Prati Shloke Prati Akshare Nana Artakai. So, this is one verse saying, that Srimad Bhagavatam is itself equivalent to Krishna. Krishna is unlimited. Similarly, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Tulya means equal to, is also unlimited. So he says, Tulya Bhagavata Krishna Vibhusava Shrai, Prati Shloke. Every verse has unlimited meanings. Then Vyasdev thought, wait, wait, wait. Not every verse. Prati Akshare. Akshara means one letter. So in each verse, it's composed of so many Sanskrit letters. He said, every letter has nana artha kai. Nana means various, artha means meanings. Go ahead. Oh, it speaks so many unlimited meanings. So we have to approach Sastra with that kind of understanding. There's unlimited meanings. But if you just take unlimited meanings, you can become lost. And Mahaprabhu has warned against this, right? It's mentioned there. Naya matma prabha lobja. So if you simply become very erudite at reciting so many things, right? You use your intelligence, right, to understand so many things. Bahushrutena means you read so many scriptures, so many commentaries. This is not a good thing. They should all be studied deeply, but with the aim and objective. So what is the aim and objective of this Gaudiya line coming especially from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is what we have to ascertain. Once we have an idea, a goal, oh, then you can dig very deeply. Just like if you want to go to a particular destination, like I've, I've traveled sometimes with either my wife or with my friends, my other devotee friends, and we go for traveling preaching. So oftentimes we, we come to Dallas. My wife has come through Dallas and other places. It is the longest part of every trip to get across Texas. <laughs> the longest part of every trip. But you can now know where you're going. Like our, our father's preaching point on the last trip was to Seattle. And we're driving. So we know we can put in the miles. We can gauge how many miles you want to do today based on knowing where we're going. If there is no objective, if there's no goal, if there's no place in mind, then we're driving so many miles, but it's aimless. So in the same way, if you study Sastra, even though it's so deep, it's so unlimited, but you don't have a fixed goal in studying Sastra, it'll become just lost. You'll be lost. Even Jiva Goswami, if you read Satsandarvas, if you don't understand what you're looking for, you'll be there reading all kinds of things. You'll be mass confused. Even uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Just think, Srimad Bhagavatam is 18,000 verses. Normally, our procedure was to do one verse every day, right? That's the class mode. We have Bhagavatam class, one verse a day. How long will it take you to read Bhagavatam? Long time. You'll read what? Once in a life? Completely? Huh? I, I, who can do the math right quick in the head? 48 years. Huh? 48 years. Twice. Yep, twice. Once, yeah. So, and if you have no perspective, then what? <laughs> so we need that perspective. So what is the perspective? Right? When Vyasadeva first compiled Srimad Bhagavatam, not Bhagavatam, when he first com compiled and divided all the Vedic Sastras, right? Everything was there, right? If you look in Padma Purana, Purana, Vishnu Purana, you'll even see narrations about Krishna and Radhika. 
right? But there was no perspective, right? Therefore, when Nada Muni came to Sampras Ashram, this is the Ashram of Vyasadev, and Vyasadev please said, tell me, what is my deficiency? What have I done wrong? This is yeoman's work. I'm mean, actually empowered by Bhagavan for this purpose. Still, I'm feeling some inadequacy. I'm feeling something is wrong. And because you can enter the hearts of all jivas, you can tell me what it is that I'm deficient in. Why am I feeling like this? Then Nada Muni told, because you have failed to glorify properly the wonderful qualities of Sri Krishna. So then I thought, well, how could that be? Because you read Padma Puran, so many glorifications. Bhavishya Puran, Vishnu Puran. So many you find all kinds of glorifications of Krishna. But what didn't you find? Oh. Huh? Not only Gopi Bhav. What, what it means to serve Krishna. You understand? What is clear path of service to Krishna or bhakti yoga? That you could not find. You could find all the information, but you could not find how to serve, how to obtain uh, this bhakti towards Krishna. So Vyasa Dev, that's why the very second shloka of the book says, Dharma Prochita Kaita Votra. Right? That I'm kicking out, pra in, in Sanskrit, one prefix is, pra means prakashtarupe. It means to completely, ujita means to take out or raise up to completely take out or raise up anything that doesn't have to do with pure bhakti is the purpose of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It makes it different from everything else written. With everything else, you can get karma, you can get gyan, but not in Srimad Bhagavatam. The purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam was exclusively for devotion to Krishna. Then Vyasadeva realized, because he received instruction from Nada Muni, how do I realize what is bhakti to Krishna? What are the gradations of bhakti to Krishna? What is the topmost bhakti to Krishna? How do I realize it? You will have to do manasik bhakti. Manasik bhakti means bhakti deep within yourself. Right? This kind of bhakti is called raganuga bhakti. You understand? Because you cannot realize braj without raganuga bhakti, yet braj is the highest type of mood of bhakti towards Krishna. That's how we know Vyasadeva performed Raghunuga Bhakti, besides the verse says so. What is it? Bhakti Yogena, Bhakti Yogena Manasi, Samyat Pratihile Amale, Apasha Purusham Puranam, Mayayam Upasvitam. So in this verse it says that he did Manasik Bhakti. What Manasik Bhakti? He did deep Leela Smaran on all the different pastimes of all the incarnations, and in his Samadhi, he realized the pinnacle of all pastimes to be Sri Krishna Lila. That's why he wrote in a crumb. A crumb means a progression. So he wrote delineating all the different incarnations and culminating in Krishna Lila. Then in the 11th canto, how do you get bhakti for Krishna? He describes how there's different bad circumstances that will take place. He describes predictions for this age, all of that. The very last thing he describes, Nama Sankirtana Yasa Sarva Papa Pranasanam. So this verse he says, look, I've told everything up to the highest kind of bhakti. Radha Dasyam. This is the highest type of bhakti. Plus I've told you how to do it from the very beginning, from Varashram Dharma all the way up to Radha Nuga, Lila Smar and everything I've told. But Kali Yuga is going to be very, very difficult. And the sages at Namasudanyan were realizing that. So they, well, you have to speak. How are people going to do this in Kali Yuga? Mandasu Mandamatiyo, Mandabhagi Hu Badrita. They have so many different bad qualities. How are they going to Kirtanayasa, Sarva Papa Pranasanam? Again, this pra word is there, Prakashrupe. Nasana means to destroy. To completely destroy all sins and, and uh, anarthas which block you from obtaining this high bhakti can be accomplished by what? Sankirtan. Namdamakari Bhakti. Proper nam sankirtan, right? And sankirtan doesn't mean just congregational chanting. Also, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam or hearing Harikata is also sankirtan. Doing jap is also a kirtan, right? If you're doing japa with meditation and everything else, right? So, if you do sankirtan, right, then all of the obstacles you have towards a Obtaining this type of bhakti described in Bhagavatam will be removed and you can obtain this very high goal. So, Kaleya Doshini Dehera Janasti Kohomad Guna Kirtana Reva Krishna Shamukta Sangha One great thing about the Kali Yuga, it is called Danya Kali Yuga. Why? 
because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came in this Kali Yug. And because he came in this Kali Yug, all kinds of jivas, despite their qualification or disqualification, would have an opportunity to get Sadhu Sangha and obtain this highest type of bhakti. So the highest thing is available in the lowest period of spiritual climate. <laughs> this is like the, I don't know, the worst weather season. If you took the four ages, Kali Yuga is like the worst season. But the highest thing has become available in this Kali Yuga, not every Kali Yuga. So you don't want to miss the boat and wait around for the next one because it's not going to be the same. In this Kali Yuga, Mahaprabhu has come, so it's called Danya Kali. In this Danya Kali, Mahaprabhu's special dispensation, that you can get the highest type of bhakti, right, with the minimum purchase. Harinam, lolium means greed. Sadhu Sangha, actually. Sadhu Sangha doesn't just mean we all meet together and you find out if anybody has a spiritual name, that's Sadhu Sangha. Not really the meaning. It is association, but not really necessarily Sadhu Sangha. Jiva Goswami described what is Sadhu Sangha. Samyak rupeng anugamana. So samyak means complete, means by your body, your mind, your words, your moods. Huh? Samyak rupeng, completely giving. Huh? Anugamana, the following with Follow completely to a sadhu. Well, who's a sadhu? Sadnoti, sadayati cha, krishna prem, itti sadhu. That person who has understood sat vastu. Sat means eternal truth. Vastu means substance. The person who's understood the ultimate reality or vastu to be krishna prem and has realized it himself or herself, that person is a sadhu. To give yourself completely to the service by body, mind, words, moods, everything, so that kind of person is called doing sadhu sangha. Understand? So under the guidance of that kind of sadhu sangha, with a clear goal in mind, we can do shwadhyay. Shwadhyay means sastric study. And then with a vision of a goal, we can begin to look at the sastra. So now our original point, for Bhishma Panchaka, we were discussing the relevance of Bhishma Pitamaha to these last five days of Karatik Mas, or Urjabrat. Urja Mas means the month of Shimati Radhika. Right? So how is Bhishma Dev related to this? When Bhishma Dev was leaving this world, after the battle of Kuruksetra, he spent 58 days laying among the great massacre that was there at Kuruksetra. Right? I think I took notes. What was the, the count that was there? This is described in the Sri Parva of Mahabharata. It describes when Yudhisthira came back to give a report on what had happened and the casualties, he came back and he told Yudhisthira. Twenty thousand men perished in this war. Numbers. Six, six hundred, uh, one billion, six hundred sixty million, 20,000, this is in the Sri Parva of Mahabharata. This is Yudhisthira Maharaj's report to Dhritarashtra after the battle. The power given to him by his father Shantanu, that he could leave his body whenever he wanted to, he was waiting for the Uttarayan. Uttarayan means the sun going towards the north. This is the best time to leave the body. He was waiting for that period to come. So he had sealed up the wounds of his body, right, to stop all of his blood from draining out. And by breathing alone, he was laying on a bed of arrows with his head drooped down this way. At that time, Yudhisthira Maharaj, having seen the uh, effects of this battle, was heart-stricken. And he wanted to somehow find a way to make amends. What can I do? So many people have passed away in this great battle. Now we should understand, if you read the very first part of Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna's chariot is drawn in between the two armies, Vishnu Chakravati Thakur Pat says, 
when Krishna looked over all the armies on the other side, what did he do? He took the lives. He took their lives. Simply looking at him, he took their lives. Vishnu Chakravati Tokopat said, what he took was the Parabdha Karma. This was the commentary Vishnu Chakravati. Parabdha Karma means your present body. So the present karmic situation of all of those, and for those who were either devatas or anything else, he took away the lila that they were performing so they could go back to their respective places. Same he'll do with the uh, Vishni dynasty at Prabhas, doing the Mosala lila, his own family. They're mostly demigods, everything. So in the Mosala lila, they all give up their lila here, go back to their post as demigods, etc., etc. Okay? So, Yudhisthira went out among this huge massacre, feeling completely devastated at what had happened. Bhishma Dev had been laying there for 53 days. He's been 58 days in total, 53, he was laying there. When they came across him, everybody had heard that Bhishma Dev was there, but he was about to give up his life. Because just that time, they were calculating the sun is going to start heading north. So, so many thousands of people came along with Yudhisthira in order to hear Bhishma Dev's instructions on what should happen next. So when Yudhisthira Maharaj arrived there and they saw the condition of Bhishma Dev, first of all, the, the Pandavas, whose hearts were so close to Bhishma Dev, completely broke. And they were melted in affection, looking at the condition of Bhishma Dev. But Bhishma Dev was telling, you should not have any worry for me. I have complete control over my life. And all of those who have passed away here, they passed away not by your arrangement. They passed away by the arrangement. Krishna himself. Then Bhishma was saying two things. I am thirsty and my head, I cannot speak because my head is like this. So it's very difficult for him to speak. So that time he asked for a way to raise his head and he asked for some drinking water. So immediately, and he said, no, no, no. Why will I accept all these material comforts at the time I'm giving up this body? I don't want to remember palaces and kings and all these. I don't remember these things. Any bona fide chakri here will know what is needed at this time. So who stepped forward? Arjun. And Arjun first took three arrows and excellently made a pillow for his head. Then he shot one more arrow. The water went in. That arrow was a messenger. Where was that message to? Ganga Devi, who was the father of Bhishma Devi. Understand? And Ganga Devi herself then came up as a stream and entered the mouth to cure the thirst of Bhishma Pitamaha. Now Bhishma Dev was ready to speak. So Yudhisthira Maharaj, he could hardly get his questions out because he was so broken. So again, Bhishma Ma uh, Pitamaha began to console him. So he told him, not only has everything already been arranged by Krishna himself, but that very Krishna is non different from Lord Narayan, the supreme control of everything. But you, Pandavas, are so fortunate you cannot always think that he's Narayan because he's working with you and living with you and sleeping with you and eating with you just like an intimate friend. So how fortunate are you that that very Narayan has now come and he's associating with you just like an ordinary friend. He even acts as your messenger. He acted as the chariot driver for your brother. What is the great fortune of your family? You cannot be sad at this time. So when Yudhisthira became a little more composed, the sages who were present on his behalf asked, now the population may be in difficulty because we need bona fide leadership and we need to know what should be done. At that point, uh, Bhishma Dev took advantage and he spoke about four verses, four or five verses on Rajniti. Rajniti means Instructions about being a king, what you should do, what you should not do, how to manage the kingdom, how to console everybody, how to do everything. After that, realizing that there was so little time left, he wanted to spend the balance of that time absorbed in the real purpose of leaving this world. What is the real thing one should do when he's leaving this world? 
He should absorb his mind and everything else in whom? Krishna. Ah. So Krishna was right there before him. So then he took advantage to begin to completely meditate on Krishna. So I'll start to read the verses here and begin to give some explanations here. Vishuddhaya dharanaya haitta shubhash tar iksha rasu gata yudha shramaha nivritta savindriya vritti vibramas tushtaeva janyam visrijan janadhanam. So he tells him, by pure meditation, looking at Lord Sri Krishna, he at once was freed from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow's wounds. So two things here. One, is Bhishma a Nitya Siddha or not? Yes. Yes. Because Vishnu Chakravati Thakur said, even the Vasu, because there's a whole backstory, I'm not telling the whole backstory, but there's one Vasu, right, who's named Prabhas in the previous life, they tried to steal the common day of I'm giving in brief. <laughs> so these eight Vasus were cursed. Because Prabhas was the leader in that attempt to steal, he was cursed to stay on earth longer. Because you know the story, Mara Santana, who marries Ganga Devi, she says, look, I'll marry you, but don't ask me any questions about what I do. Of course, they have seven children, and one after another, she drowns them. On the eighth child, she says, he says, wait a minute, what's going on here? He says, well, now I can tell you what's going on, but now I'm not going to be with you anymore. Okay. So then she tells him, these eight children were cursed, right, by Rashi in order for this to happen. Now they've all gone back to their abodes, but Prabhas, who was the leader of the ring in stealing the common Danu, him and his wife, he had to take it, right? So... So now, any question? Any other question? Huh. So now, if Bhishma, Pita Maha is a Nitya Siddha Pure Devotee, how is he suffering any pain here? And if he was already laying there for 53 days, <laughs> right? What is the question if he was suffering any pain? So why is the Sastra stating that he was suffering pain and simply by looking at Krishna, all this pain was removed? Separation? Yes. Separation. Yes. What pain was there? The desire in order to have the association of Krishna is the greatest kind of pain. He had control over his body and his mind. Right? If so, when they bought silk pillows to comfort you, oh yes, please help me. Right? If we, if we cut my finger, yes, yes, wrap it up. I'm a hypochondriac to the max. So if something happens to me, I go to my wife and I remember once... I don't know what was going on. Because he spent his entire life, he never was in Braj. He didn't live in Dwarka. Only he was hearing about Krishna's activities. At Kurukshetra, during the solar eclipse, he was also there. He had the association of Krishna there. When Krishna would come to give a message, right, to Duryodhana and him before the war, he got to have association then. So only from time to time he would see Krishna, right? At the battle of Kurukshetra, when Krishna pulled the two chariots between the, uh, the two armies, and he spoke Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Bhishma Dev drank that Bhagavad Gita like nectar. I'm going to explain that shortly. But he became completely absorbed. And now he was completely satisfied. There was no more pain of this type of separation. All the beautiful facts about Krishna. He prayed transcendentally to the control of all living beings while he was quitting his body. Shri Bhishma Vacha Itti Matara Upakalpita Vitsrina Bhagavati Sattvata Pungave Vibhumani Swa Sukam Upakate Kwachit Vihartum Prakritim Upeyusi Yad Bhava Pravaha Bhishma said, Let me now invest all of my thinking, feeling, and willing. These are three things that every jiva has naturally as part of their existence in being Satchitananda. He has existence, some cognition, and the tendency for happiness or the potential for happiness. Every jiva, this is our composition, they are Satchitananda. Three vrittis or functions of being Satchitananda are thinking, feeling, and willing. So now he's saying, let me take those three functions which naturally exist in every jiva, and completely invest them alone 
in thinking, feeling, and willing in relation to my Ishtadev. Ishtadev means my worshipable deity. They were so long engaged in other different subjects. So Bhishma Pita Maha being Nitya Siddha, not always engaged in other subjects. He always was thinking about Krishna. But in the Leela, he was engaged in many things. He was acting as a king, arranging the marriage of his stepbrothers. He had to take a vow no anymore. I can give everything now, my thinking, feeling, willing, unhindered towards super meditation, deep meditation on Mahesh today. Before I had one complication also. I was living in the house of Duryodhan, in the land and property of Duryodhan. Therefore, I had to accommodate and oblige him in so many ways. This is the nature of politics. But now I'm free from any encumbrances, materially or spiritually, and I can freely invest my everything in my Ishtadev, Lord Shri Krishna. He is always self-satisfied. What is the meaning of Krishna being self-satisfied or Atmaram? I've spoken this thing before. What is Krishna's Atmaramata? It's written in Skanda Purana. Yes. Atmaramas turarika tashramane vaso. Atmaramas iti prokta muni be guyavedi be. Verse in Skanda Purana clearly says, why is Krishna Atmaramata? Because inside his heart, Shimati Radhika is always doing Ramana. Means giving pleasure. Because Radha and Krishna are one person. They're not two people. Radha Krishna Chai Sada Ek E Sarup. Written in Adi Lila Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Lila Rasa Ashudite Dhari Duiru. They've taken two forms only to taste pastimes. So Krishna's very happiness is called Aladini. Right? His happiness is called Aladini. The personification of the Aladini is Shimati Radhika. Ladini Sarabhav, Bhav, Para Prem, Prem, Paramakastana, Mahabhav, Mahabhav Swarupini, Sri Radha Takarani. Radha herself is Krishna's happiness. You understand this point? So, he's telling here, yes, he is completely Atmaram, self-satisfied. Bhishma Dev knows everything. He knows. You'll get to that, you'll see. He knows everything. But sometimes, being the leader of devotees, he enjoys transcendental pleasure. Even though Krishna is Atmaramata, still, Bhishma Dev is pointing out, but superior to Atmaramata, Vilas, means playing with his own self. Enjoying his own self is part, of course not. Everybody needs other people. Because this exists in Bhagavan himself. So though Krishna is Atmaramata in his nature, he even manifests two features of his own self in the form of Radha and Krishna to taste happiness in an expanded way. Similarly, with all his devotees, he expands his happiness even more. Just like if Radhika is complete, why do you need other gopis? If Radhika is his complete happiness, what is the need of any other gopis? She's the mother of enjoyment. Exactly, Bahu Kanti. Oh, Kanti, Navino Ulas. Unless there are many, many, Kantis means gopis, there can't be Ulas. Ulas means like happiness, great happiness. You understand? Plus, by having so many different gopis, then the beauty, quality, uh, exceptional nature of Radhika is exalted. So now, by comparison, you can see, oh, so beautiful. You understand? By comparison, oh, so qualified. By comparison, oh, so sweet. You understand? So this way, by having many, many gopis, then Radhika's glory is even more exalted and Krishna becomes even more happy. Understand? So Bhishma Deva is recognizing this. Therefore, he says, even though he's self-satisfied, he still takes pleasure in having many, many devotees. And even he descends to this world. 10th Canto Shima Bhavatam clearly mentioned, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam, right? Also Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya Sadunam, why does God come to this world? Anyone? Why does God come to this world? Goloka, there's any problem there? Hey. Right? They don't have forest fires, hurricanes. Like we had a hurricane around where everybody had to evacuate. No problems like that. Vaikunta means no anxiety, no problems. Why does he have to leave there to come here to taste anything? Service devotees. Huh? Service Yes. Paritranaya sadhunam. A byproduct is Vishnaya Vinashaya Chaduskritam. Byproduct is demons are killed. But the main thing is Paritanas give happiness to the devotees. 
Similarly, Tim Canto Bhagavatam, Anugrahaya Bhaktanam. I came to show my mercy to my devotees. And the devotees show mercy to everyone else. Therefore, Mahan didn't come here to deliver all the conditioned souls. The reason we say that is because when he comes to give love and affection and a special thing to his devotees, those devotees then spill out his affection onto all the other people. This is the nature of a devotee. You understand? Mahababu comes for his devotees because the Lord doesn't know what is suffering. This was a very heavy thing. Rajiva Goswami has written this. Krishna does not know what is suffering. What any feature of Krishna knows what suffering is an expansion, like Ikadasi Devi. You read the story of Ikadasi? When Krishna went into the hellish planets, right, he heard all the crying and screaming and everything. He couldn't digest what it is. But from his body, one form manifested, that was the form of Ikadasi. So Ikadasi could now grasp what is suffering. And therefore Ikadasi made a shelter. If you will follow no grains and follow Ikadasi brought, then it frees one from sinful life, etc., etc. Krishna doesn't know what is suffering. He's always absorbed in transcendental happiness. But his devotees know what is suffering. Therefore, they're called paradukka dukhi. They know what is suffering. Therefore, he comes to give them pleasure. They take that pleasure and give it to the world, thereby extinguishing the suffering of the world. The very first thing we sing every morning. Guru Dev has come like a cloud. Where did he get the mercy from? From the ocean of mercy. But did the ocean come? Ocean didn't come. The ocean is Radha Krishna themselves, but they didn't come. Who came? Mm. Oh, Guru Dev came like a cloud. He moved and he, he gave the water of relief from material suffering. Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur's Mahakavi means great poet. If you study deeply writings of Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur, very beautiful. Right? So Bhishma Dev is saying here, oh, the Lord comes to give transcendental pleasure to his devotees, even though he's Atmaram. Tribhuvana ha kamanam tamal of hananam, ravi kara ghoura, varambham dadahani, vapura loka, kula vritta nhan bhajam, vijaya soke ratiastu me anvayadya. Sri Krishna, he's the intimate friend of Arjun. So he's telling to Arjun, what can you say, Yudhisthira? This Krishna has become so dear to your brother. Not only how affectionate is he, he didn't take the most senior person even. He didn't say, oh, only to Yudhisthira because you're the elder, so forth. He, no, even to your younger brother, he's so dear and affectionate. What is the nature of this person who's Bhagavan himself that he's come to this world and he's showing so much love and affection not only to even a senior person, but even to the most junior person, like Arjun. He appeared on this earth in his self-same transcendental body. So here Bhishma Dev now realizes, right, or he's expressing his realization, that the very form he's seeing of Krishna is Asat Chidananda Samvit Sandini Ladini Swarup. You understand? Because when Krishna was present 5,000 years ago, different people saw him, right? Some people saw him according to Maya Drish. Maya Drish means the vision of Maya. So they couldn't understand what is this, right? But if the Maya Drish is moved, the, the Maya influence, then people can see the actual transcendental form of Krishna. Like now, are we seeing Krishna or not? Krishna is here or not? Sri Govinda Dev is here, but everybody seeing? Same like 5,000 years ago. Similarly, in Vrindavan Dham, Vrindavan Dham is the same Nitya Golok Dham descends to this world. But on top of it is called Drishyamana Prakash. It means there's a covering of Maya that doesn't allow ordinary jivas to see it. You can only see dust, dirt, rickshaws, noise, etc. Understand? He says this body is true, and his body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems. Right? May his glittering yellow dress and his lotus face covered with uh, paintings of sandal pulp be offered an uh, object of my attraction uh, and may I not desire any fruit of activity. So now he's beginning to see Krishna, but not only is he seeing Krishna, but he's seeing Krishna according to the vision 
of higher class devotees. Because who was the worshipable deity of Bhishma Dev? Does anybody know? Chattubhuj Narayan. He understood Krishna to be that same Chattubhuj Narayan. He mentioned before, this is my own issue today. Right? But he's seeing Krishna, oh, I know this Krishna is that same Chattubhuj Narayan. You understand? But by the mercy of Krishna, having heard Bhagavad Gita on the battle of Kuruksetra, the heart of Bhishma has been transformed. So now he's starting to, to, to speak of Krishna in terms of the same way Braj devotees see him with his Pitambar, the beauty of his face attracting the three worlds. What great warrior man can sit on the battlefield, look at some, another king and say, face is so beautiful, it attracts the whole three worlds. <laughs> you understand? Who can say? Only when your heart has been changed. You understand? And you no longer identify with any upari in this world. Upari means designation in this world. Then you can see from the angle of vision of the truth. And who has the true highest vision of what Krishna's beauty is? Brahma described his beauty. Even the uh, Brahmanis, right? When Krishna went to beg, right? The Yagnik Brahmanis, they also wrote something about his beauty. But whose vision do we take of Krishna's beauty to be the highest? Braj Gopis. We take their description to be the highest. Bhishma Dev is getting some darshan of this thing now. So he begins only by describing Krishna's Pitambar. Why is he describing Krishna's Pitambar? Because when he forced Krishna to break his promise on the battle of Kuruksetra, and Krishna jumped down from the chariot of Arjun and picked up a wheel, and he was running, right? Only Arjun could stop him so he wouldn't break his promise. But Bhishma Dev got to see the darshan of how his Pitambar flew off of his body. Then one remembrance came into Bhishma Dev's mind. I saw this one time before. When we were at Kuruksetra during the Surya Grahan means the solar eclipse, at that time, the Brijabhasis, they arrived there at Kuruksetra. Jiva Goswami said that they weren't actually invited. They invited kings and royal families, right? But most people in villages, they normally just did what they do. But the Brijabhasis heard he was coming there. So they took on their own. We don't need an invitation. He's ours. We don't need an invitation. So they came there before, but when they got to the gate, the gate goes, yeah, who are you? Right? People came, people had turbans on, people had, you know, simple dresses on everything. Nobody was wearing crowns and diamonds and okay, who are you people? Oh, we've come here to see our son. Your son? Your son can't possibly be in here. It's a gated community. <laughs> Your son possibly can't be in here. Right? So royal families from all over the world, they're here for the Surya ground to do puja and everything. Your son is not here. So again, they were repeating and repeating. So what is the name of your son? Oh, his name is Nandalal. His name is Kanai. No Kanai here. Huh? We've never heard of Kanai, Nandalals. We haven't heard these people. So by that time, the word had gotten by messenger to Krishna and Balaram. They were sitting in the suburb, means the assembly hall. Soon as it came to their attention that Krishna Balaram had come, they immediately jumped up and made an excuse, oh, we have to go. And immediately they started running. When they got outside, away from the other uh, kings, and so they started running. They were running so fast. The other kings came out there, what's going on? Maybe some demons or anything, we don't know. Maybe somebody's attacking. They came out and looked and saw Krishna Balaram running at full speed. And as they were running, their crowns fell. Their bangles were coming from their arms. And especially Krishna's Pitambar, everything, his yellow royal cloth, flew off of his body. When Krishna arrived at the gate, he was completely not having any royal insignia on. But while he was speaking to the Brijabhasis, that time his servants would run behind him. They picked everything up. So when they got there, they immediately came up to him like, uh, Raktak and Patrak and Braj, every morning, they used to, on the insistence of Rohini Ma and Yashoda, they would dress Krishna. Because they're servants in the house of Nanda Maharaj. They're not Krishna's servants. Krishna has no money. <laughs> he has no way to take care of them. Right? He, has, he, can't, he can't give them any flour. Any, he himself is stealing money. He doesn't have anything to give them. Right? So they're actually servants of Nanda Maharaj. Right? And they're like, in the category of Dasya to Krishna, but like friends more. Right? Because there's no pure Dasya Ras and Braj. So they come and they dress Krishna every morning very sweetly, 
and all of his suckers they watch. And sometimes the suckers criticize. Oh, that thing doesn't look so good, right? And then they will change it. And then Manu Mungo will tell, yes, it doesn't look so good on you, but it looks excellent on me. And then he'll take his things and he'll put on his own body. You understand? This is how Krishna is dressed in Braj. But now the royal servants, they ran behind, they picked everything up, and they began to put his royal bangles on. One of those bangles, not like what Krishna used to wear in Braj. He wear bangles made of flowers. Chutta pravala stapak ubbala jya malanu prapitta paridana vichitravesho described in Venu Gita, how Krishna used to be dressed. He would be dressed in lotus flowers, petals from different kinds of flowers. Huh? He would wear flower garland. This is how he was dressed in Braj. But now, one servant came to pick up one of his bracelets and he had to use two hands. Solid gold, diamonds, everything. Putting on Krishna's wrist. So now, the gopis standing at a distance seeing this, they thought, wow. This is a very famous verse recited by Manavinda Puripada. That formerly, Ai Dina Dayadranat. Dina Dayadra means a person, Dean means like in a very destitute condition, Dayadra, nothing. Right? To that person, Krishna used to be the Lord in Vrindavan. Because when the gopis or anyone would suffer separation, Krishna would show up and he would be like the Lord and Savior of their condition by giving his association. Right? The gopis, every day Krishna used to go cow, uh, cow grazing, Gopi Geet is described there. Atatite bhavan anikananam tritayugayate tvam apashatam. Tritayugayate means like millennia, right? One second of your being gone when you go out to do gochan or cow grazing, it's like whole millennia, whole yugas have passed. You understand? So when Krishna would again show up and give them darshan at the end of the day, or any of their rendezvous during the day, oh, their hearts would become so satisfied. So he was, ayi, ayi is like an expression of, ah, ayi dina dayadranat, you are the Lord of those kind of people. But now, we see something different. Matura nata karalokshahe, now we see royal people coming and dressing you like servants, big crowns, diamonds, bracelets, all these things. Right? Bhishma Dev is remembering this because he was there at Kuruk Satra during the solar eclipse, and he saw it. Now he's leaving this world, and he mentions, oh, he has that yellow glittering cloth on again. The same one that I saw him run to his most beloved Brijabhasis and drop, and the same one he dropped when he was running to break his promise in order to satisfy my desire. You understand? Only a couple more. Yuri Turhagarajo Vidumra Vishwak Kacha Rita Sramohari Alakrit Chase Mamo Nishita Sarai Vidyamano Twachi Vilasat Kwache Stu Krishna Ma. On the battlefield where Krishna, huh? on the battlefield hmm? where Krishna attended to Arjuna out of friendship. The, the flowing hair of Krishna turned ashen due to the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses. Who else sees this vision? When? Golduli. Golduli. Yes. You understand, Vishma Dev? He's telling in code, right? Because he's heard Bhagavad Gita. I'm going to get to the crux point here. This is proof of what he heard in Bhagavad Gita. See, if we don't read these things with a shovel, Hard to see. He's saying, I saw you on the battlefield also. That time it wasn't cows, but it was the dust raised by all the horses. But when you ran at me, I noticed this fine condition. If somebody's running at you to kill you on the battle, you're taking time to notice the dust in their hair? <laughs> hair was dusty and everything? No. I understand. So this was a meditation that entered and made a sun scar in the heart of Bhishma Dev. That when you came at me while you were protecting your friend, in other words, you were showing love. So in the same way, you used to take your cows out and show so much affection to your cows. Everything. And when you would come home in the evening, you'd be covered in gold. Braj duli. Duli means dust. It would rise up in the air from all the different cows walking and you'd be covered. And we'd see you coming back like that. Bhishma Dev saying, I also remember seeing you like that. 
with your hair flowing. You understand? Like a verse from Gopi Geet. Very much like a verse from Gopi Geet. Okay. And because of his labor, beads of sweat wetted his face. Right? So when Krishna would come back, same thing. Because Krishna used to have to, not every cow was obedient. Krishna would blow. Krishna has a japa mala with 108 beads that keeps track of all the different categories of cows. There's 100 different groups of cows by color, eight by shape of their face. Right? And to keep track of when Krishna would play his flute, the particular tune for that group, that group would show up, he'd count. Next, count, count. This is like japa mala of the cows. Right? So sometimes there was always the cow who didn't want to come home. So he takes off running. Krishna has to go chase him, get him back in her. He takes his little stick and gets everybody back. So this way when Krishna came, he was covered in dust and beads of sweat from walking back in Braj. All these decorations, right, intensified by the wounds dealt by my sharp arrows. Now Bhishma Dev relates his own situation because he has a mixture, right, of some Vatsalya. There's some Vatsalya in Bhishma Dev because he was older, but also Viraras. One Gon Ras, right, is a uh, Mukti Ras means the five primary Rasas. Gon Ras means secondary Rasas. One secondary Ras is Vira Ras. So now he was seeing the Darshan of the Vira Ras of himself and Krishna. You also had the wounds which were inflicted by my arrows. Now, when you read the commentary of Vishnu Chakravati Thakur, do you know what he compares this to? Uh, huh? Love yeah. Oh, you read it. <laughs> Wow. 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 Okay. Because people, you're not, in uh, Kshatriya law, you're not supposed to, the, the Maharata, the, the generals, are not supposed to attack another chariot driver. It's against the uh, rules of war. So, but Bhishma kept licking Krishna here, here, with his arrow. That will really make Krishna well, want to kill him. But <laughs> Krishna uh, felt those as the love fights of the gold. And Bhishma is revealing that. Vishnu Chakravati Thakurapa says that. Sapiri Sakti Vacho Visamya Madhye Nija Prayor Bhalayo Ratam Nireshya Shtitavati Para Sanikyo Rakshna Hitavati Parta Sake Rati Mamashtu. It's a beautiful verse, actually. In obedience to the command of his friend. So, first, he acknowledges how Krishna, who's the supreme personality of God, and Bhagavan himself, can become controlled by devotees. Right? Just like Krishna told. Huh? When uh, um, Durvasa came to Vaikuntha, when Ambarish, he offended Ambarish, he's being chased by Sudarachan Chakra, he went there, he said, hey, let me explain something to you. What is that verse? Uh, Ashwatantra Evadija. Aham bhakta paradino, this verse. Aham bhakta paradino, ashvatantra e, na, na ashvatantra e vadvija. Oh, Brahman, you should understand I'm not independent. I am deemed, means I am under the control of my devotees. So here Bhishma Dev is saying, not only Krishna has come under the control of these devotees, but he's completely under the control of the Bhujabhasis also. Completely. Listen. Aham bhakta paradino. What devotees is he mostly under control? Like with Srimati Radhika, right? Nirantaram vasikrita pratitti nanda nandane kadakari shasihamam kripa kataksha He is always completely under the control of Srimati Radhika. She is called Vasikaras. Means she has the ability to completely control Krishna, right? Just like the song, Radha Siromani Vishavanu Nandini. Nidavasane paridhana in a purata jini panavika singi bada kaveri hari prana. Kaveri means a brave, right? So she's telling what is the glory of Srimati Radhika? Radhika's charm and beauty is so much that she has Krishna's life, his pran, tied up in her braid. She's controlling Krishna at will. This is the beauty of how Krishna's control. So he says, to Arjun, you showed the same thing. Because in obedience to his command, you became under his control. For that reason, you entered into the middle between the two armies. Because Arjun, once he became bewildered, he told Krishna, drive my chariot in between the armies so I can see who's here. I think I'll take this point.
to introduce the main theme of what we're talking about. Bhishma Dev had never been to Braj. Bhishma Dev did not live with Krishna and Dwarka, therefore he never heard the conversations of Uddhav and Krishna talking. There was no place where we read that Krishna ever confided in Bhishma Dev regarding Braj, Braj Gopis, separation from Braj. Nowhere we read that he's done that. Where did Bhishma Dev, besides what he observed at Kuruksetra, did he assimilate the depth of Braj Bhakti that he could now speak so many coded things describing simultaneously his own experience and the beauty of Braj Bhakti? I think he gave us a hint. We he did. He heard Gita. Because he heard Bhagavad Gita. You understand? So this means Bhagavad Gita is a complete revelation regarding the nature of Krishna's own inner moods of separation towards Braj is also embedded in this Bhagavad Gita. Now first, the argument will come, wait a minute, but the speaker of Bhagavad Gita is Vasudev Krishna. He's like a king, like a Chatriya. How can you say that he's talking about Braj Bhakti? No. In the Gita Upanishad, Gita Mahatmya, it describes Sava Upanasado Bhavo Dukta Nandana Gopala Parta Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta Dukta Gita Amrita Mahat That the Bhagavad Gita is being spoken by the milkman of Braj. He has taken Arjun like a calf. Whenever you want to get milk from a cow, you bring the calf there. And when you bring the calf, the natural motherly instinct is to release milk by the mother or the cow. So in the same way Krishna used Parta Vatsa Sudhir Bhokta, oh intelligent men, see how Krishna took Arjun like a Vatsa, like a calf. And what did he do? Dukta. He made available for all you devotees to drink Gita Amrit, the nectar of this Gita. You understand? So he made the nectar of his own heart available by using Arjun. So actually on the battle of Kuruksetra, it is not Arjun who becomes bewildered. That's why when you read all the commentaries of the charge, they say the so-called bewilderment of Arjun. We've interpreted that to mean, well, Arjun's a pure devotee, so he couldn't fall into ignorance. But the deeper meaning here is that Arjun's bewilderment is his own vicarious heart connection with Krishna, and Krishna's bewilderment having come back to the place, the same place he met the bridge of Basis earlier. When they met at Kuruksetra and they had all these wonderful dealings, right, for two months, Krishna had again Ross Leela in a private place, all these things. Now, the gopis wanted Krishna to return to Braj with him, but he couldn't do it, right? So now again, their separation has grown to greater and greater heights. So is Krishna's. Now, they're getting ready to fight this big battle, they come back to that. Whatever. Does that bring that memory up or not? Okay, let's be real. We're trying to be devotees, there's no question. Everything. Krishna will come back to the place where he met Brijabasi's last. He's suffering in great separation day after day in Dwarka. Now this big battle is about to take place. He won't even fight in the battle because of this reason. Because when the Brijabasi saw him at Kuruksetra and saw him dressed like a royal prince, right? He thought, oh, they're leaving with the impression that I'm like a warrior, like I'm a king. I purposely arranged to come in a dynasty where I couldn't even be a king. You know the curse of Maharaj, Yati, everything? There could be no kings. Krishna could not be king. That's why he made uh, Ugrasen the king after he killed Kamsa. Because in his dynasty, according to what happened with the sons of Yayati, was it? Puru and so forth and so on, right? You cursed it. They would never be kings. Right? Yayati cursed one of his sons. No kings will come in your dynasty. That's the dynasty Krishna came in. So Krishna made, I, I tried to arrange it, so I'd never have to be a king. Still all these intrigues unfold, and here I'm in Dwarka, and here I am like a leader king of Dwarka. I didn't want this. The only reason we made Dwarka was to save the Bridge of Asis anyway. Because when Jarasan would attack with all these armies, Mathura and Vrindavan are so close that Jarasan's army may spill over. They may come to know my affection for Bridge of Asis and take advantage of it. Therefore, in the middle of the night, Krishna did a deep meditation, and at the same time, the Bridge of Asis were having a yagya because they heard about the attack of Jarasan. They were doing a fire yagya, and in the fire yagya they said, May Krishna be protected by a great moat, like an ocean. Swaha! 
May Krishna build a magnificent city where no one can touch him. Swaha. And Krishna was receiving that in his heart. Therefore, out of his uh, Icha Shakti, out of his own will, he manifested Dwarka. So all the Mathura Vasis went to sleep one night and they woke up the next day in Dwarka. They went to sleep in Mathura. They heard, dum, dum, dum. that's like the Jamuna, right? Because you can hear the bubbling of Jamuna. Next day they woke up, they heard, like waves crashing. So they thought, well, Jamuna is gotten way out of hand, right? They woke up, they looked out, they saw the ocean here. Right? That's why the place is called Dwaraka. I went to Dwaraka. So the Pajaris there will tell you the name Dwaraka means Dwara Kaha. Kaha means where, from where. And Dwara means door. Where was the doorway to this place? How did this place come about? <laughs> you understand? So Krishna was in that place suffering deeply from Vrijabhasis. Now he's come back to this very Kuruksetra where he last met them. He won't feel anything. He won't, he won't have any emotion will come to his heart. He'll only be concerned about this stupid war. That's why Bhishma Dev said when he pulled his army out in the middle, he took and he looked over everybody. And when he looked over everybody, what did he do? War was over. Because Krishna took already the lives out. That's why he told Arjuna. If you want to, you can be an instrument in this. It's already happened. I did this right in the very beginning. That's why Bhishma Dev told him in the beginning, this was all Krishna's plan. This was already done. You have no fault in this. So that was the end of the battle of Kuru Sancha right there. When Krishna pulled his army, in be, I mean, the chariot in between the two, he looked at everybody. All right, it's a wrap. <laughs> right? He could have told Arjuna, okay, put your arrows away. All you guys, don't even wait for the time. Just sit down in your chariots and wait for death to come. It's on its way. You understand? But in order to have the Leela, right, they did all these things. Right? But already he had already taken all the lives of the warriors there. So what really was going on? Krishna then took advantage. Arjun, you are so much a dear close friend to me. Even though you're not like Uddhav. You may not understand everything deeply like Uddhav. And you've never been to Braj. But many times before, me and you used to talk about the gopis. Do you know that Krishna used to talk about the gopis to Arjun? Many times. What is the proof? Al Srila Prabhupada wrote the proof. When Krishna Ras Kaviraj Goswami was proving the superiority of the love of Radhika, right? He was writing in the fourth chapter of Adi Lila. What does he quote as proof? Let's listen to it. O oh, Arjun, there is no greater receptacles of deep love for me than the gopis who cleanse and decorate their bodies because they consider them mine. This is Krishna Kavi Raj Goswami writing in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He's quoting from the Adi Puran. You understand? Then he goes on. Oh, because you are my very dear friend, I'm speaking to you, my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. So he's told Arjuna Bhagavad Gita, I'm telling you this because you're so close to me as a friend. We used to talk about the gopis before. So now, look, I can't, there's thousands and thousands of people here. Millions, actually. Billions, according to the numbers, right? I cannot directly speak to you about what I'm feeling. But because your heart is so close to me, I'm going to speak in a code, and by my mercy, you'll be able to understand it. So what does he do then? He said, okay, the battle's over. I already took the lives of all these soldiers, but let me tell you what's going on with me. All right? Let's take this little bit of time. Let me tell you what's going on with me. All right? I am suffering some deep, Moods of depression from the bridge of Aussies. I'm feeling deep separation. Right? I cannot say that overtly, so I'll tell you in all these different codes. So first I'll tell you. Uh, all these different verses of Bhagavad Gita, you start looking at them in a different way, they're all coded for how Krishna is suffering separation from the bridge of Aussies. Then at a certain point, Krishna can't control himself. So he says, look, all of this stuff we're doing is a waste of time. We're here, we're fighting, we think we're chattries, we're doing all of this. Sava dhamma parit jajja mom ekanam saranam braja. Oh, just give up all of these things and let's all go to Braj. <laughs> you understand? He can't control himself anymore. You understand? So in the 18th chapter, 66 verse, he just outright tells it, look, forget all of this. Don't worry, but then I just, what, you think some sin may come? Oh, moksha shami, masucha, don't worry, I'll protect you from the sin of that. Right? And Krishna can say anything, right? He tells everybody anything, yeah. 
yeah, 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 don't worry about it. We could do this. I'll be back in one or two days. That's what he told the gopis. I'll be back in one or two days. Right? Mm -hmm. That's why the gopis said, what is that verse? Kava kata amritam tata jivanam kavi biriditam kalma sapaham. Poets, kavis, this is their nature also. That's why they're comparing Krishna to a kavi. Right? All the poets, and you yourself sometimes say things, it may or may not be true, but it sounds good. <laughs> right? Poets, that's what they do. Right? So Krishna's saying the same thing. I do not worry about any of this stuff. I just got through telling you about dharma, sin, it's your duty. But forget all of that. Let's just forget all this stuff and let's go back to brudge. You understand? Then he tells him, Oh, Partha, the planetary systems... Uh, on this earth are especially fortunate. For on this earth, the town of Vrindavan, and there the gopis are especially glorious because among them is my Radharani. This is Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 4 2 16. This is Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami speaking this. So Krishna and Arjuna have talked before about the intimacy with the gopis and with Srimati Radhika. So it is no surprise that he's taking advantage to do it now on the battle of Kuruksetra. And according to the Adi Kav, those who are listening, they can understand something. Duryodhan, what did he understand? What's going on over here? What the heck is going on? We've gathered here. Everybody's ready to go. The blue account shows already. That's like, you know, when the, when the wrestling arena comes on and the guy says, all right, fight, right? All of a sudden, wait a minute, hold up. Then you come into the middle of the ring and you start talking to your friend. Yeah, she broke my heart, so forth, so forth. <laughs> You understand? So now saying that Krishna and Arjuna have pulled out in the middle, all of a sudden billions of soldiers are there from all over the world. And Krishna is giving this coded catharsis to Arjuna about his separation from Vrindavan. But people like Bhishma Dev, he understood. And now that he's giving up his life, he's explaining what he understood. All right, I'm going to go to the last verse here. Uh, this is the verse that encapsulates everything. And we're getting close on time. Lalita Gatti Vilas of Alguhas. Lalita Gatti Vilas. Does anybody know what Lalita Gatti Vilas is? Lalit means playful, charming, sweet. All the Sanskrit dictionary, all these definitions are given. Gatti means here, not go. Gatti means like um, movement, like dancing. Lalita Gatti Vilas. What is the Lalit Gatti Vilas for Krishna? Ras Comingly dancing and so forth. So he said smiling. And not only you were smiling, Pranaya Narikshana, huh? Pranaya Pranaya means love. But here Pranaya, because in love there's different gradations. Praying. Shneha, pra, Pranaya Man, or Man Pranaya, sometimes depending on the circumstances, they go in different orders, right? But Pranaya means when the lover and beloved have become so close and all barriers are removed, this is called Pranaya. So pra, Pranaya Nirikshana, you were in such close proximity to someone while you were doing this Lalita Gati Vilas that you could look at them eye to eye. Nirikshana means looking at them eye to eye. So looking upon someone, while you're doing Lalita Gati Vilas in Pranay. You understand it or not? Say yes or no. Yeah. It's clear? No? No. When Krishna was dancing Ras Lila, he danced so fast, Krishna Chakravati Thakur said, he appeared between each gopi. And he put his arm around each gopi and was looking at them in their eyes. Bhishma Dev subtly is speaking the same kata. Lalita Gati means... And the way where I got this from is in the purport, and Vishnu Chakravati Thakur mentions he's talking about the Rasa dance. Right? So he says, in the Rasa dance, Krishna was doing Lalita Gati. Means he was dancing. That's what Lalita Gati is. Vilas means a pastime. So in the pastime of the Rasa Lila, Falguhasa, Krishna was smiling. He was very happy. And the Gopi simile were doing Pranay Narikshana. Means they were close enough in Pranay that they were looking Krishna face to face. Right? So now Bhishma Dev says, how did this come to me? Kalpita Urumanaha. Kalpita, Kalpana means imagination in Sanskrit. Kalpita, if you look in the dictionary, also means imagination. But 
You could not imagine this because Ras Lila is beyond our imagination. Moreover, Bhishma Dev is Mahajan. He won't use imagination. So he says, how did I get it? It came into my mind, Urumanaha, by the high glorification you were giving. Urumanaha, the literal translation here is highly glorified. So that highly glorified Rasa Lila and the mood of This. Where did Bishma Dave hear this from? Exactly openly speaking it. Yes, in the Rasa dance, when you were looking face to face with the gopis and you became very happy, and they were in their great love looking at you also. Oh, how did this come to me? When you were speaking. When it came into my mind, the proof that it was not imagination was that I had a vision. What was the vision? When you left the Rasa dance. So he has meeting and separation in this verse. When you left the Rasa dance, what happened? The gopis in their deep separation, Kriptamanu, Kriptavatya, Un Madha. Un Mad means well, one level of transcendental uh, love is called Un Mad. Give your Un Mad. When you become like mad due to separation or mad due to praying. So he's saying, in that madness, the gopis started imitating the qualities and activities of Krishna. Krita manu, krita bhaktya. Right? So Shamarani Didi, I have an original painting that Shamarani Didi did. She mercifully allowed us to keep it. Where the gopis are imitating the Krishna. You ever seen? This happened during their search for Krishna when he disappeared from the Ross dance, right? So he sees this. This is proof. It's not Kalpana, his imagination. It's a darshan that he received by understanding and realizing the glorification that was being given in Bhagavad Gita by Krishna. He understood it. It came in his heart. He saw this thing. What else did he see? Prakriti Mukankila, Yasha Gopavadvaha. He saw that all the gopis, Gopi Babaha means the Kaur damsels, right? That's direct translation. Yasha means them, right? Prakritim Akan Kila. Their natures completely changed. He saw them go through the different transformations of Sastik Bhavs, of Sanchari Bhavs. He saw that with his own inner vision. This is the Darshan given to Bhishma Dev before he gives up this world. You understand? After that. <laughs> Because once you see that, you're done, right? Just like in the Guru Astakam prayers, when you get to Nikonja Yuno Rati Kali Siddhai, Yajali Bi Yukti My Guru Dev, you see his Mamjari form. After that, oh, Sakshad Hari Dweno Shamas, then you come back down to earth. You understand? This is the highest vision. Now coming back down to earth. Oh, Sakshad Hari Dweno Shamas Shastri. All the Sastras glorify Guru. He's so great. Right? Similarly, and Shukadev Goswami used to do this. That's why the Bhagavatam, even Krishna's Leela, is out of sequence. Like he describes Deinukasura Leela after describing one Leela that's actually after it. But he describes it, and uh, Vishnu Chakravati Tapo says because he was in such ecstasy, he would hit a certain point in order to keep himself going, he would change the subject so he could balance himself, then he would go back again. Like he's talking about some high class of Ras Lila. Then he says, and Nanda Maharaj was then attacked by a snake. <laughs> so that's a Vishnu Chakravati Thakur gave insight. Yes, because Sukadeva Goswami, his bhav would go so high that if he kept going, he, because he was, had this mood, that even while he did not mention the name of Radhika, right? Radha Nama Prachani Na San Masiko Bhavet. Muchita San Masiko Bhavet. If he had mentioned the name of Radhika, he might faint. That's how high class of Love he has, right? So he would change the mood. So similarly here, Bhishma Dev now has come back down. He says, oh, at the Rajasuya Yagya, right? This is an actual thing that happened down here, right? Because he's seen his vision of Braj, everything. Now he's coming back. At the Rajasuya Yagya, what you did there was great. Because in the assembly of all of these kings, 
You took time to honor Sri Krishna as the most perfect among all these people. Lord Krishna was worshipped by you as the personality of Godhead. Hmm? And he says, this happened in my direct presence. I remember this incident in order to keep my mind upon the Lord. Hmm. After this, the famous verse, now I've reached the pinnacle of my realizations. So now I can meditate in full concentration upon that one Lord, Sri Krishna, who's now present before me. Because now I have transcended the misconceptions of duality in regards to his presence in everyone's heart. Even the hearts of the mental speculators. He is in everyone's heart. The sun may be perceived differently, but the sun is one. So now he's come all the way back to touch with Sadanta and everything. Is that the Vridi Vridi verse? Yes. Vridi Vridi Dishtitam Atma Kalpitanam. The Maya bodies run with that. All duality is gone. So oh, deep meaning is here though. Vridi Vridi Dishtitam. He's there within the heart of everyone. Kalpitanam means, Kalpitanam means those who even have imagination. Like Maya body and so forth so on. Speculators. Mm -hmm. Then I'm looking for the final verse. Then Bhishma Dev became absorbed completely in Samadhi, right? Merged all of his actions, right? And then the very last thing, which they recite from Srila Prabhupada. Then Bhishma Dev gave up his body, all the demigods honored him, etc., etc. And last thing, because they recited this verse for Srila Prabhupada, that's why I like to recite it as the last thing. Anyways, I didn't find it. But then it says, that person who spoke upon many subjects, in this way many times, etc. I can't remember the verse by heart, but it's a very beautiful verse describing he finally had given up everything and it completely entered into samadhi. Mm -hmm. Like this. So, Sri Bhishma Panchaka Ki Jai, Sri Bhishma Dev Mahajana Ki Jai, Sri Braj Bhakti in Bhagavad Gita and everything, Ki yes. Jai. <laughs> Someday we have to read the Bhagavad Gita in this in verse by verse in this in this regard. Today, but our God brother Loka Guru uh, looked up the actual timeline in uh, in sequence. Mm -hmm. Yesterday began Bhishma Panchaka. Bhishma Panchaka. Five uh, days. Last five days. Panchaka. 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 It begins its five days of fasting. Then the Gita Jayanti is the first day of uh, the Battle of Kurukshetra. Mm -hmm. That this year will be December 18th. That goes for 18 days. That's when Bhishma falls on the bed of arrows. Mm -hmm. And then 53 days until Makara Sankranti does he come to his Samadhi. Yes. So that's the order. Of Bhishma's uh, involvement starting yesterday. I think we'll have a question. So we were doing Bhagavad Gita readings on, on Sunday evenings. Oh. And we just did one yesterday. Yeah. And I feel like. was about um, Lord Krishna's involvement in killing demons. Mm. And, and the, the question was originally posted by Narayani who was first at, in initial stages of Krishna consciousness was wondering how can God be so cruel to, to kill all these demons and at least engage in such as ghastly activity. And then you know, I was saying that, well, he enjoys everything. He does. <coughs> but then there's this other katata was arising in the conversation from Vishnu that was doing the killing. Full 
Swami, this is the source for this. When Krishna, after Devaki mentioned to when Lord Vishnu had appeared in the dungeon, right? Mm -hmm. Lord Vishnu was there, said, Hey, when you were Sutapan Krishna, you prayed that I would become your son. So here I am, all four arms, this club, Lord, everything I'm here. How's everything going? I see things are not going good, actually. <laughs> right? So then, Devaki, by the inspiration coming from the heart of Yashoda, our Acharya said the word Yashoda means, Yasya means fame, Da means to give. Coming from our heart, the mood of Vatsalya praying enters the heart of Devaki. At that time, she says something in that absorption of Vatsalya praying that doesn't make sense. What does she say? afraid of being here and you have to show you're Bhagavan, right? So does she think Kamsa was superior to Bhagavan? No. No. So you would have thought, no, don't become a baby, stay Bhagavan. Because if you're Bhagavan, right, you're gonna kill Kamsa, get us out of here, everything is gonna be good. But all of a sudden this thought comes out, can you please make yourself a baby and hide from Kamsa? Right? So at that time Krishna hearing that call through a conduit that was made there earlier by the transference of Shankarshan from the womb of Rohini, I'm excuse me, from the womb of Devaki to Rohini when she had the miscarriage, a conduit between Braj and Mathura was created. At that time, Krishna in that conduit comes to the dungeon of Vasudeva and Devaki. He gives Darshan to them as their baby, right? Because now she has the blessings of Mother Yashoda who's the the archetype, the model of parental love. So now, Krishna says, well, what are we going to do with this Vishnu thing here? Okay, look, come on. So he takes Vishnu, and Jiva Goswami says, he subsumed the form of Vishnu. I have some uses for you. So when he comes back to Braj, that Vishnu form is called Stapani Akarshani. Stapani Akarshani means he establishes himself there, and when he's not needed, he goes away. Just like you establish a deity when you're doing yajna, then you do the mantra, send the deity away. So that Stapani Akashini Vishnu entered the body of Rajinda Nanda and Krishna. When it came time to kill the demons, two things would go on simultaneously. Krishna would have the experience of the bliss of his own Leela. Like with Trinavarta, Krishna saw birds one day and he wanted to fly. So Krishna used to run really fast and he would try to jump and fly and he would fall. And he would fall in mud and mud you showed have to clean him off everything. So he would say, Mom, what fault am I doing? that these birds, are they better than me? He used to talk to my show. These birds, are they better than your Lala? Why I cannot do like they're doing? So one day, by his Icha Shakti, he got the chance because Trinavarta came. So when Trinavarta came, he grabbed the whole of neck of Trinavarta and he was flying. Oh, this is the, oh, finally. <laughs> right, he was holding on really tight and everything. But then, that Vishnu in him, right, by the arrangement of Yogmaya Shakti, she said, okay, it's time to kill him. Why? Because Trinavarta formerly was also one person who had been cursed by a devotee to come there. I forgot that it's back. You can read in Gaga Samhita that tells the backstory on all the demons. Right? So it was his due time to be killed. But before that, he got to serve Krishna. And this way, he was liberated from all of his offenses. So Gaga Samhita tells the backstory. Keshi, Bakasura, and Columbus were all brothers. Right? So those three brothers, they stole lotus flowers from the garden of Parvati Devi. And Parvati Devi told Lord Shiva to curse anybody who takes lotuses from there. They had taken those lotuses to offer flowers to Krishna. But what happened was Parvati was doing a particular vrat. She was going to offer 100,000 lotuses. So Lord Shiva had made just enough lotuses for her to offer her vrat. And when they took some, Parvati, I don't want to hear it, right? So, <laughs> so Lord Shiva was obliged to curse them. But he said, look, because I'm cursing you, I'm also giving you benediction. All three of you will take birth in Braj and you'll be killed successfully by Krishna and Balaram. You understand? So there's a backstory to all the demons killed in Braj. Now, second thing, there's four phases of killing demons. One are demons like those, like Putana, who's the daughter, or some people say sister, of Bali Maharaj. Right? And when Bali Mar and when um, Vamandev came there, she saw him and saw the beauty. I wish I had a baby like that. I would feed him my own breast milk. Then when he bound Bali Maharaj up, she says, oh, I would give him poison. So then Krishna said, okay, Tatastu, so be it. So then that, uh, that sister of Bali Maharaj took birth as Putana. You understand? So there's backstory to them. 
Outside of Braj, there's also one class of demons who were not killed in Braj, but they were still Krish killed by Krishna liberated. Jarasandha, Salva, right? Banasur, right? Narakasur, right? That's a whole other class of demons, right? And this is all to satisfy Prithvi Devi, Bhumi Devi. She came and said, look, I'm overburdened. So because of his love for her, he said, yes, I'll take care of it. So he first he removed all those who were cursed by devotees and been addicted at the same time to be killed. Second, those outside of Braj. Third, the two big armies, right? One the enemy army and one the devotee army, so to speak, just making it easy, right? So in the battle of Kuruksetra, we just read the numbers. He ridded the earth of that burden of all of those, and only one burden remained. What was the last burden? Yes. His own, yeah, yeah. Because if they had stayed there, could you imagine? What are you talking about? Krishna's di I'm in the direct family of Krishna. What are you talking about? Move over. <laughs> Understand? So to make sure that didn't happen, because demigods could get bewildered like this, he arranged for Mosala Lila. In the Mosala Lila, he arranged that all of them would be able to be the final reading of the burden of the earth. Baladev said, okay, everything is done. And the sage came from his mouth. He laid down. Went back home. I'll meet you when you get back home. Can I? He went back to go to Vrindavan, right? And then Krishna, he did not immediately go because he was contemplating something. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, he wrote one verse in code. Yam yam api smaram bhavam tajayade ante kalevaram. Whatever anybody becomes absorbed in, what bhav they have at the time they're leaving this world, what they're doing smaran, that kalevaram they will obtain, right? That body they will obtain. We're taking that as an instruction for us, which is also true, right? Because there's many different levels of Bhagavad Gita. I spoke Samanyan, Guya, Guyata, Guyatam, Savaguyatam. So in Savaguyatam, Krishna is saying, yes, I'm looking to get a body, a special kind of body. What kind of body? Eh? Purva Vraj Vilasa, Eitin Avilasa. I had three desires when I was in Vraj. One, what is the nature of the love of Radhika? Two, how does she experience me? Three, what kind of happiness does she experience? I want that body so I can experience that. So I want the body of Asraya Jatya Tattva. A body where I can experience what it's like to love me. But how will I know? If I become the body of experience what it's like to love me, how will I know what that's like? I also want a body where I can witness it myself. Therefore he arranged himself to take two forms at the end. What two forms? One, the form of Gauranga Mahavu, and the other form? Jagannath. So now he's standing there at Jagannath with huge eyes watching himself. <laughs> this is far out. <laughs> Understand? But now he's watching, this is far out. Right? I can't even move. Right? So like this. So, so can it be said that Krishna himself is engaged in killing demons? No. Krishna is only engaged in his Lila Vilas. Vishnu is killing the demons. Mm -hmm. And he's going, yay, I have my bird, I can see all this, yeah, yeah. like the bird. But see, Vishnu is pounding yes. on Trinavartha, yes. and then he dies. So and that's why Krishna said at the end, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. what happened? We were having so much fun. <laughs> I was even thinking you could become one of my friends, I would introduce you to Subhash, Shadam, yeah. Vasudam, and we all fly everything, because I share everything with my friends, and then you just died and your eyes grew, they said look like Raskulas and <laughs> everything. Why you became so ugly and fell and everything. Yes, sir? So when he says that he comes, in Bhagavad Gita he says that he, he comes here to save devotees and destroy demons. Not save, paritranaya saguna. Paritranaya means to give pleasure, actually. Give pleasure to, to devotees and destroy the demons. Byproduct of destroying the demons. Jiva Goswami in Bhagavad Sandhava gives the, maybe Bhagavad Sandhava, I have to remember. He gives example of how that works. He says in the morning it's very cold in India and the kitchens are outside. So when people go outside, they're going outside to cook. So they go, they start the chula, means the fire and the stove. So they start everything and they start cooking and everything. What happens to the room automatically? Warm it warms up. Did they go out to warm up a room or did they go out to cook? So Jiva Goswami gave this very example to show. Okay. It's a byproduct of giving pleasure to devotees. So when he says that, okay, so it's not like he's directly doing it. No. See, I understood through the translation when he says, I'm, I'm coming here to do these two things. But it's, but it's how he's doing. He is doing it. How he's doing it is the question. <coughs> yeah, yeah byproduct naturally. Lalita? I just wanted to know how is it that um, Bhishma 
even though his Ishtadev ish is Narayan, That's then true. how is he able to see um, Krishna as Krishna? It's kind of like similar like Lord Chaitanya in the Srinivasa pastime where he reveals himself. Because Bhishma Dev, he saw that Krishna is that Narayan. He had this understanding. Garga Rishi also had this understanding. There's a whole thing when Garga Rishi goes to Braj to do the naming ceremony. He's conflicted because he knows Krishna's Narayan. He knows he's God. But the Bhujabhasis, they don't believe that. No. So it's like a whole thing. How will I work this out? What will happen to me when I see Krishna? I notice my Ishta Dev, Lord Narayan. But I can't do that in front of these village people. right? So there are many instances like this. So Bhishma Dev knows this. But why did he get this darshan becomes a question. Why? His affection to Pandavas. You understand? And what was the mood of Pandavas? They had intimate mood with Krishna, almost like Bhijabhasis, mm -hmm. except they knew he was Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. So after witnessing and after hearing about the glories of Braj, these Pandavas said, we want to be like that. What do we have to do? Well, look, I tell you, first thing, when everything comes to an end, just make everybody think that you went to heaven or something. Right? Because this Bhajan is very confidential. So at the end of Mahabharata, it says that one by one, they all went and they obtained swaga. First they had to do some suffering for this, all these different kind of things. But that's just an illusion. What did they really do? They went to the banks of Shamakund. They took the form of trees, like Uddhava takes the form of grass. And they're doing deep bhajan at Shamakunda in order to obtain this Braj Bhakti. Mm. Mahaprabhu seeing the depth of their efforts to obtain this Braj Bhakti says that maybe you will not take birth in Braj because so much fun we have together in Mathura and Dwaka. But come into my Gaur Lila, and I will give you the intensity of the taste of Braj Bhakti there. Hey, where will we come? You can be the sons of Bhavananda Roy. So the Pandavas come as the sons of Bhavananda Roy, and they taste. Prem Naiva Gopuramanam Kama Mityagamat Pratam Uddhava Adayo Pietam Vajanti Bhagavat Priya All the devotees from different incarnations, they come into Mahaprabhu's Lila, and they taste the intensity of Braj Ras, though they don't give up their own swaroops. In serving Mahaprabhu in Visesh Dashabhav, Visesh Dashabhav means a special kind of dasha to Mahaprabhu, they taste the intensity. This commentary is given in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. I sent the commentary to Shamarana Guru. This commentary is in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu of this verse. You understand? So they taste the intensity of Braj Prem. And Mahaprabhu, to prove that he was keeping his word, Ye Janamat Ishta Prabhu Apanar, Shei Goranga Shei Avatar, during the Mahaprakash, when Mahaprabhu was showing all the different forms, he showed him, hey, you worship the Sringadev, I'm the Sringadev. You worship Varaha, I'm Varaha. Right? Understand? So he showed all these things to prove to all these devotees. Murari Gupta, here's your Ramachandra. You understand? So he showed everybody. But they all came and they tasted the intensity of Braj Ras. And, but in Braj Ras, the most superior pastime, some Yaksaravasana Krishna Ras Lila. Your Ras Lila is the most superior past. How will we taste that? Oh, I'll arrange. So, what is the Ras Mandal of Gaur Lila? The courtyard of Srivas. Is the Ras Lila, is the Ras Mandal in Gaur Lila. So, coming, they taste Kirtan Ras Lila. I don't know which Bhagavad Gita you're reading from, but it might be good to ask both. Because Srila Gurudev's Bhagavad Gita takes Krishna out of the Hey, devotees, I really, really, I'm very sorry. I apologize. I ran over okay. so much. Anyway, Dandavat. Jaya Sri Krishna. Hi, Bhagavad Yes. That's why it's so important to chant pure nam. To chant pure nam, you enter into that. Yep. This is our aspiration. Our, our, our aspiration is really not initially for Braj. Our aspiration first, Guru Nishta. Second aspiration, may I take birth in the association of the high class devotees, like during the time of Vishnu Chakravati Thakur or Bhakti Sanan Saraswati Thakur. Right? Then, may I take any birth in Gaur Lila? And in Gaur Lila, 
I'll hear the kirtan in the house of Srivas. And by great fortune, one devotee will grab my hand and take me there to the courtyard of Srivas. And only in a distant place, they'll let me stand and see the kirtan and maybe bring water for those kirtaniyas. And hearing that kirtan of Mahaprabhu, everything is completely purified, right? And hearing that, my own swaru via the Sudanam coming in this Gore Kirtan will reveal to me my own swaru and everything. Understand? And that's why Bhumi says it's important to realize that is here. Because Mahaprabhu's Leela, you saw, if you read Bhakti Ratnakar or anything, you can see how anytime there's pure Kirtan, Mahaprabhu shows up. Even though that's not unusual, right? What is that verse? Naham Tishtami Vaikunte, Yogin, Naham Tishtami Vaikunte, Yogin Amadei Shuva, right? Huh? Wherever my devotees are chanting my name, I show up at that place. All right, just so late. Jaya Sachi Nandan Jaya Gora Hari Jaya Sachi Nandan Jaya Gora Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Nita Gora Hari I'm sorry, Boo, I know I kept late. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you, Bubuji, for coming and for staying. I know it's kept so late. Other things to do. Yeah, he mentions it because that time, no, that's it, sorry, he just fall on the line. Because he mentions himself, his own worshipable deity of Narayan. He mentions that. But he recognized that Krishna is not different from that Narayan. And that's in Bhumi, right? Huh? That's in Bhumi? In this Bhumi law. He sees like this and goes to all form? Yeah, he sees Krishna's to all form and gets all this mercy. It doesn't say what he came in Gordon, that does not say. But in his battlefield here, he tasted something. You know, when he's leaving, Krishna gives him a darshan of looking at each other. Yes, to all form. Krishna's standing looking at him. No, no. In his verses, he's saying that Kalpita, Kalp, the word Kalpana in Sanskrit means imagination. But you cannot say a pure devotee imagine this, right? So Kalpita, then he qualifies how it came in his mind. It wasn't imagination, but Uru Manaha. Kalpita Uru Manaha. Uru Manaha means, Uru means like greater, right? Uru Manaha. If somebody is continuously glorifying something and extolling the glories of it, then it came in my mind. That's how I heard about Harikata. But where did he hear it? Because he was never around Krishna and Uddhava when he speak these things. He was not around Krishna and Arjuna speaking these things. So where? At the battle of Kuruksetra. He was able to ascertain when Krishna was speaking. Krishna gave him the mercy. Like he told Arjuna, I'm giving you divine eyes to see this universal form. Nobody's seen it before. Similarly, he gave Bhishma Dev, ha, ah, you can hear. What is the beauty of what I'm saying? Other than that, he could not have spoken these statements, right? Because they, they have no relation. He would have just said, thank you, I'm about to leave my body. I thank you very much. I hope I was, you know, <laughs> you know I've served well. I'm on my way back to Vaikuntha, boss. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, Prabhu, so thank you so much for coming. So much thank you very much. Oh, no, you're coming no, no. with so much mercy. Arigobindu no, no, really, really. yeah. Prabhu, we're gone. So, no, really wonderful. Oh, no, thank you for coming. Yeah,
And it's the Gossi, you know, the Lord is always talking like this. You know. Oh, no, I was just saying to me because we're all going there. Uh, where is that? Right there. Oh, okay. Did you guys walk or no? No, I don't. Oh, okay. So close, like two minutes away. All right. But yeah, please read your book book of that travel every year. And we come across, I'd love to just stop and visit and then go talk to them. I'll give you my number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 